this movie will show how to use IRENA size distribution tool to analyze a size distribution of uh, powder particles in case of this example. Um, these are powders of two, of mixture of two alumina powders we collected some time ago on a USEX instrument. Uh, these powders were mixed of manufacturers powders um, about assumed 1 micron size for the large ones and 0 0.05 micron size for the small ones. These powders were mixed and then they were spread on a sticky tape and measured by the instrument. We will first load in Igor the uh, Irina macros. From the macros menu I selected uh, load Irina SAS macros. When the code compiles we have a SAS menu here. First we have to get the data inside Igor so we can take data import and export and import the ASCII data. We get a import data tool and here we select the data path. In our specific case we have the data located on the desktop um, in handouts. 2010 PDD files and here are example data. These should be included or can be downloaded from the web. Um, in our case, we are looking for test data.dat. If you now select it and then hit test, the code will check how many columns of data there are. If you hit preview, you can actually see what is there. In this case, it's an exported data file from the USAX instrument. So it has a header containing information. and But then it has the thing which really interests us, which is that three columns of data, Q, intensity, and error. So the first column is Q, second is intensity, third is error. Uh, let's use these two checkboxes so the file is named easily for us to understand. If you hit enter, import here, you now have a record down here which tells you what has happened. It has in imported one data file and it created new waves which now we can use. So now we have the data inside an Igor experiment. We can close the associated uh, windows and we can select, select a size distribution tool. Get a new panel here. What we can do here is we will select that we have used QRS naming structure after which we now have an access to the data folder we wanted and automatically we get this thing filled with the QRNS data. This is Q intensity and error. Uh, it graph and let me show you get to the field of view of the movie. So now we have, this is an intensity in centimeters to minus one of centimeter square per centimeter cube, absolutely calibrated. And then here we have a cube. You can see the scattering now. If you look on that, there is something, some kind of hump here, which indicates smaller sizes. There's a hump here. The power law slope at low Q probably cannot be uh, modeled properly by this tool. It actually represents the clumps, sizes of clumps of powder particles. So we will not attempt to measure that. So what we'll do is we'll move actually the cursor down here. So we basically try to analyze this guinea area, power law slope, this guinea area. And then what we do is we move this one up here, because really the data down here at the end contain very little information, and we just confuse the code. Um, now. We can make a minimum diameter, leave it on 25 angstroms. Maximum diameter we have to increase because this is 100 nanometers. We need more. Let's add one more zero in there to push it to one micron. Number of bin is fine. When you study such a wide range of sizes, you actually need a logarithmic binning for the for the despacing of sizes. Um, the background you can see that's the red line here needs to be slightly higher because the all the green points here are mostly above it. So let's just click a few times and increase it so it crosses most of the green points here. That represents the flat background in the small and the scattering data. Um, contrast for alumina is uh, 
1491, I believe. Let me check on that. Um, 10094, actually. Even though this is powder and the absolute intensity here is probably not well calibrated because for powders there is a very difficult way to do. But this is a real contrast of alumina against air. For starter, let's increase the scaling factor to maybe 5. That increases the error bars, makes it easier for the code to reach a solution within error bars. Particle model. There's a number of particle models available. You can read about them in a attached uh, available PDF file. The file is available from a uh, selection here. You can see there is a PDF manual form, form factor and structure factor description, which is where you would find the description of these shape models. And um, so, but spheroid is a reasonably good choice. I mean, most of the particles are considered spheres, which is easy to calculate in small angle scattering. In this case, they're probably fine. Aspect ratio 1 is going to make a spheroid in a sphere. There are three methods available here for analysis. Most of the time, the maximum entropy works really well. Um, the other option is internal point gradient slash total non-negative least square method. I know it's a mouthful, but that's a method which works under some conditions also very well. Both of these have an advantage of being confined to only positive solutions, which gives physically reasonable data um, results. Uh, regularization, unluckily, is not bound to positive uh, solutions and sometimes gets negative volumes, which is not particularly physical. Um, you can try any one of these and see how they work. Um, let's try maximum entropy first. And... Uh, Let's leave these parameters for now as they are and just do a run fitting here. You can see how the fit progressed. You get the fit. There's a misfit at this sizes here. Uh, so there's a reasonably good fit out here. So uh, it's already telling us that we have two size distributions. There's something here which you will actually see it gets removed. If we take this maximum entropy sky background, which is like a maximum entropy type. Um, flat distribution which it's using internally. Don't worry about that too much. If it comes up to be red, just hit set button and rerun the fitting. And you can see that actually now you don't see anything smaller. Uh, you see one peak here which represents the smaller powder which we put in the system and then this here which represents the large powder we put in the system. Now I told you that the size was 1 micron and 0.05 micron uh, but you can see that probably those powders are much finer. Um, the fine stuff is already between 10 and 20 nanometers instead of 50 nanometers, as the manufacturer indicated. And the 1 micron particles are between 100 nanometers and maybe 200, 250 nanometers. There's really not much left at higher sizes. Now, there is this low Q power loss slope, which you know may represent the larger particles or it represents some kind of agglomerates. Anyway. Uh, we can now squeeze the solution down by making the scaling factor smaller, maybe 1.5, and see if we can fit better the data. And if we do that, you can see that the code will, you know, fit better the curve, but at the cost of getting noisier and noisier data. So, selecting the proper error multiplier is actually a kind of balancing act. If you go too small, let's say 0.8, and hit run fitting, you may find out there is no solution ever reached and, and you find that whatever the code can do will not satisfy the data. The maximum entropy, maximum number of iterations, 100, uh, basically stops the, uh, the uh, fitting after this number is reached. So it's kind of bailout value for you. So, <clears throat> and you can see if you take 2.5 and around fitting, you get a fit which is reasonably smooth, but there's still some misfit in here. So the art of fitting these data is actually finding the proper uh, proper parameter for multiplying the errors, which gives a reasonably smooth result, at the same time gives a fit which is close to the measured data. 
So somewhere around 1.4 or 1.6 might be the right number for this specific case. Okay. We can see there are some changes in the shades, but generally the positions are the same. You can now, when you are happy with the results, you can actually say store in data folder. What that does, and you can actually make notes here, there's a predefined note here where you can change that. And what that does, it adds, if you look in data browser, it adds new waves. So in the folder test data where we imported the data, we actually got these three data, these three waves were imported in Igor. If you look on them, you actually find out that the import tool has added all the wave node, um, all the header in the wave node here, so it's available to you, and you can always find what you had in there. So we had these three data sets, uh, these, these waves. They were the small angle scattering data. What the sizes now created is they created intensity and Q vectors. These are the fit for the data. So these are the Q values, and that's the intensity values calculated for this model. We also added a distribution of diameters, and they then added two distributions. It's a volume distribution, which is what we actually see in this in this uh, graph here. And it's a number distribution, which is the uh, which is the volume distribution converted in number distribution by simply dividing dividing each bin with a volume of a particle in that bin. So that depends which uh, type of distribution you actually need for your for your analysis. So now that's available for us for some other analyses. For example, there is a tool which allows you to evaluate size distributions. If you look in that tool, you can then load the results in, for example, the volume distribution at you can make it a log axis, you can put the cursor between here and here, and you can find out that if these data were really, these were not powders, but really solid materials which are absolutely calibrated, you could actually get a real volume in the range. In this case, that's not that's an arbitrary volume. But you can get, you know, you could get the number density, you can get specific surface area, you can get the mean mode, medium for the specific peak. So if you, you know, whichever number is appropriate for your specific application, maybe here. And so you can do analysis, you can compare these curves, you can even create a mercury intrusion porosimetric curve on this tool. Um, and you can create some well documented, well documented uh, pictures here. Now, <clears throat> you can also use the IPG internal point gradient uh, total non-negative least square method. Um, it has different parameters. Uh, and if you try to run fitting here, you will find out that it iterates very fast and you get slightly different looking solution. Um, you need to as expect that the mul error multiplier may be different Maybe what we need to do is have a lower error multiplier. Now, <clears throat> this method reaches very fast the solution. But you can see there are some ringing things, which basically I look like a reflection of this one at smaller and smaller size, at smaller and smaller volumes, at larger sizes. Um, that happens often. Uh, in my experience, if you have a large Q range and large size size range, maximum entropy works better. If you have narrower size distribution and smaller Q range data, the IPG TNNLS method works quite well. Regularization often fails, it has no parameters. If you do this, you can see that you have a result which is reached very fast, but what you can see are these negative volumes, which of course are not particularly physical. Um, you can play with the error multipliers to see if you can find a better solution, and you could arguably say that it gives approximately the same things. It gives a large size here and something about small sizes here, but my experience has been that this is not particularly usable method under most circumstances. So <clears throat> in, the, in a conclusion here, this tool allows you to model one or multiple size distributions of uh, scatters in your material 
under an assumption that all of them can be well represented by one shape and one contrast, um, it will produce a distribution of the size range which you decide to use. And it is very user-friendly, very easy to use, so it is more often one of the first tools people try to apply. The danger of using this tool is that often the materials really do not uh, have the structure which supports this tool. In other words, you ke often cannot assume that all of the tools, all of the sky particles can be represented by a simple shape, one of the available shapes only, and the chemistries are all the same. So uh, in that case you will have to use more complicated tools, um, generally the modeling one or modeling two tools, which should be available in another um, in another movie.